Uh, hopefully you can hear me okay. Uh, hopefully I don't make too long of a video and have this not have enough sound. So if there is enough sound, I have the camera a little bit away from me. And so the sound might be a little off and you might be getting some feedback. My son's actually in the main part of the house watching TV and I want you know, tell him to stop just because I'm making a video. And apologize for my appearance also. I Today's a snow day for us. It's March 8th, I believe. 7th or 8th of Friday. And so they had a snow day and I just came in from snowball in the driveway. So uh, I've been meaning to make this video among a couple others and I just wanted to get it done and do it. So usually I like to be dressed a little better, but sorry about that. So, so what we're going to talk about today is my opinion on, and this is, this is a little different for me too, I would want to make this series, Truth and, uh, Truth and Common Sense series, on a lot of things, and a lot of it's going to be on religion and Christianity and, and more specifically. Um, and I know it's going to probably upset some people maybe or make people not so happy with it, but I've been dodging it for a little while, so my videos are very safe. And uh, I guess that's not really why I wanted to start making videos. So I want to make videos to have an outlet for some of the information I'm running across that I can't seem to be able to talk to people about. You know, a lot of people my, where I'm at don't, aren't interested. And <laughs> so it gets real frustrating. And I went to actually even went to a um, Sunday school class, adult Sunday school class, which was very informative. But it wasn't really a discussion setting so much. It was more of putting information out, which, again, was good. But I disagreed with a lot of the stuff, so I had no outlet. So, uh, I might as well just go ahead and start and get all my negative comments going with these next few videos. It's okay. What we're going to talk about today is my first real basic discussion on this video on Bible version versions. Anybody who goes into a bookstore, anywhere, Christian bookstore, regular bookstore, can see that there's a Bible for everything. And there's got to be almost probably a thousand English versions. It's, it's unbelievable. And when I grew up, even up until maybe just a few years ago, I never really thought about it, and I really didn't think much of version issues. I thought they were just different publishers, maybe, or whatever, and never really got into it. So about five or six years ago, I started doing a little work on it, and it was very fascinating to me. If you looked at my other videos, you know, I'm into history and and um, social issues and such, and um, I really grasped onto it. Um, I am a Christian, um, historically a Roman Catholic I was brought all the way up until my confirmation in eighth grade, and, and I won't get deep into that, but um, that's where my background is. So I consider myself a Christian. Uh, so we talk about Christianity. I, you, no matter what I might say, I still believe Jesus is my Savior, and so so um, keep that in mind as you start thinking about comments for me. So uh, as the title says, hopefully the title says I haven't named this yet, but I'm probably going to call it. Um, a fake or a fraud 1611 King James Bible, something like that, to that effect. And um, I'm also getting over the flu, so sorry about that. So enough of the introductions. Let's just go ahead and dive into this. Um, there's a lot of discussions we can have about Bible versions, but we're going to talk about a real basic one. Remember, my series is very simple. It's about truth and common sense, and a lot of truth. I, I'm big into truth. I don't like lies. I can't stand lies. I mean, we all lie a little bit to do one thing or another, but problem with this age of the internet and everybody, anybody can publish anything nowadays, there's no real scruples. I mean, years ago, you used to have to go through a process to get published. But now anybody can publish anything. So you got to be real careful. And Bibles, I think, are, are definitely suffering for this. So I have three books in front of me. And, uh, and before I go to the next step, this actually will be a response to another video that was made on YouTube by, and I don't have his name yet. I wish I did. I subscribed to his channel, and he seems like a really nice guy. I mean, I've been taught to read people in my other profession, size people up remotely a little bit, and he seems like a really good guy, no matter what I might agree or disagree with him. Uh, and this one video is a disagreement with what he holds. Uh, he did a video on, his name is, um, or his name is iCartoon2, and like I say, he's really easy guy to listen to. I enjoy listening to his stuff. I just subscribe to his channel. But on this one, I do disagree with him. I'll tell you why. And it kind of launched my discussion of Bible issues, which you'll see in more videos that I'm making. So, um... What you see in front of you is three books. These are three Bibles. And the first one I'm going to show you is very sentimental to me. Well, no, not really. I mean, not too much, but a little bit. Uh, this was the first Bible I ever had. It's the only Bible, the first Bible I ever bought for myself. I had a children's Bible my parents gave me when I was real little. Uh, I wish I could find that, actually. It's, I still think that's one of the best children's Bibles I've ever seen. And I would love to find that it's somewhere in my basement somewhere. 
Uh, we moved a lot, and uh, I think it's still stored there. But my wife and I both had a copy. It was very popular back in the 70s. It was just called Children's Bible. It was about 8 by 10 the size of it. Really good job on it. A lot of pictures. It was really good. But this was the one I bought. I went to a Christian camp for the summer. My parents sent me to. And it wasn't a Catholic one either. It was Protestant. And that's another subject for another video. But um, this was the I bought this in the bookstore on, on the, uh, at the camp gift shop. And it's a King James Bible. Um, so it's the first one I bought. It's one I used. Even though I was Catholic, it was the one I used. And I even put tabs in it. And you can let me see a little bit here. I put some tabs so I can find out where I was going. I'm not going to open this Bible because it will fall apart. Uh, I'm 45 years old. I bought this in 8th grade. So between the summer of my 7th and 8th grade year. So we're talking 30 plus years ago. And, but I still keep it. It's still, it's sentimental value for most anything else. And I do, I can't open it and look through it, but it will fall apart. So, King James Bible. Well, um, I never thought much about it, but as I did sort of research as I got older, I found that um, trying to figure out what the real Bible was. And I'm still not done yet. Because <laughs> I'm going slowly, and I'm trying to use, you know, keeping uh, some basic information and not trying to have a biased opinion just to prove if I happen to like a certain Catholic Bible or whatever, and I want to prove that's the one and just use my bias and just find facts for it. It's an apologetic view, I guess. I'm not that way. I look for facts and I don't hold anything to it. If this is proven to be the wrong version, I'll go to the right version. As of today, there's about three that I'm looking at seem, that seem to hold water pretty well, and this is definitely one of them. So you can look at all the background to it, whatever. I'm not here to do that today, but I still value this as you know the Word of God. And you won't go wrong by reading the King James Bible. I'm not a King James onlyist at all, not yet anyway. But this is definitely the book that uh, seems to hold uh, water to me. Only one problem with it, and here's where we get to the meat of the video. I'm big on rules, I'm big on regulations, and I'm big on truth. And I don't believe that you can just make your own stuff up. So somebody might see where I'm going with this. This Bible is not complete. This is, well, it depends how you look at it. King James Bible was published in 1611, at least the first version. And there were some revisions for grammatical and a few other things that came up. But somewhere in the late 1700s, early 1800s, um, the King James Bible changed. The original King James Bible was published with extra books. Or they think that Protestants call them extra books. They're, uh, they call them the Apocrypha, which I don't agree with that word either, but that's another video. There are about seven, roughly seven, plus a couple books with editions that are missing from this Bible. So being a Catholic myself, I wanted to get exposed to that. And there's a big joke with Catholics about not knowing the Bible. And that's another video as well, which I'm going to make, but that's true. We don't stress it so much. So I never had a Catholic Bible. And actually, it's only been a couple of years since so I actually got a hold of one that I call mine. I've looked at them before. Um... There are missing books out of this version of the King James Bible. So I still consider this the King James version of the Bible, but there is another version, at least I consider it. A lot of people will call this a 1611 ver version. It's not. This, you could maybe say it's a 1769 version without the what they call the Apocrypha. So there's books missing out of the Bible. Well, who gave them the right to take books out? Even if you don't like a book that's in the Bible, and there's a few books I don't like. I'm very, very... Um, how do I say this? Um, I talk about it a lot about books I don't like. There's two books in the Bible I don't like. Uh, Song of Songs, or so Song of Solomon, or Canticle of Canticles, and Esther. Um, I don't think the books are bad, but they just don't have anything to do with God and the Bible to me. In fact, the original, the, the Protestant version and the Jewish version of Esther doesn't even mention God at all. The Catholic version does, but it's more like a prayer at the end that's God. Uh, the, the, one of the books with the additions that I mentioned, the other one is Dan. So, um, I, um, and Song of Songs to me is basically a Harlequin romance in the Bible that shouldn't be there. I don't like it. I don't mind saying it. I don't like it. I know people use it for talking about relationship with God, and that's fine. There's a lot of books you can read that'll do that for you. It doesn't mean it belongs in the Bible. I think this is. Uh, Song of Songs is one of the biggest jokes in the Bible that somebody put in, and they're laughing about it, and they're great. Um, it shouldn't be in there. I, don't, I just don't like it. But that's just my opinion. So who am I to say anything? I'm not going to rip it out of there. I am not going to take it out of the Bible. It's not my job. 
And there are reasons why there are books that are in the Bible. I'm not going to get into that in this video either. But they're there. And to take them out just because you don't like them is breaking the rules. It's wrong. You, who are you to say that? You can't just do what you want to do. So, okay. The real reason I bring this up and it brings me two Bibles left. This Bible here came out about three or four years ago, about 2010, 2011. It's the 400th anniversary of the King James Bible. Me being a history buff, when I saw this on the shelf, I was like, oh my God, this is great. So I picked it up. Uh, there's actually some videos on YouTube about the 1611 original. original. This, I don't have the sleeve that went with this anymore, but it says original reproduction of the original 1611 Bible, King James Bible. So, and In fact, I think Walmart was selling it for $4.97 for a little while. Well, I only picked it up in 2011, right at the end of 2011, and I had to go to a Barnes & Noble and get it, and it was $8. So I had to pay $8, so just the way it goes. And if you open it up and look inside, and I'm not going to, you know, you can't see a lot, but it's, it's in the original Gothic font, which is a problem to read. And the beginning of it is really excellent. It has a lot of these um, charts and so forth, and I know you can't see them. Of course, if I can get to one, it would be good. Sorry, uh, let me try this something here. If I had my docking camera, which I don't right now. So, and he has the lineage of Adam all the way to Jesus. And it takes like 10 pages to go through this, and it's really nice. I mean, it's really nice that way. There's only one problem. Um, this is, is billing itself as a 1611 replica. It's not because it's missing the Apocrypha, that the Protestants call and the original 1611 had the Apocrypha in it. So this one doesn't, so it's a lie. It is a fraud. You can market this and sell it if you want to, but don't call it what it's not. It is not an original 1611 Bible that has books missing. You can't just take things out just because you feel like it. And that's my biggest problem with Protestantism in general, uh, as far as the structure of it goes. Not the people. I have a problem with the people. But, uh, the way Protestantism is just... To me, Protestantism is do what you want. <laughs> I don't want to get too deep into that either, but um, you can't call this an original 1611 replica and take out the Apocrypha. And when you read the beginning of this book, I want to go through something really quickly. Bear with me. Uh, for the first time since the original King James rolled off the press, you can see and experience an exact page-by-page -page digitally remastered replica of the original 1611 printing in an economically priced edition. This replication contains a lavishly illustrated genealogy of key biblical figures from Adam and Eve to Jesus. You will enjoy the beauty of the director of initials and the complete preface entitled from the translators to the readers, which is very good, by the way, found in the original. And while the 1611 King James Version does not contain explanatory doctrinal comments, it does include annotations to help you explain the number. Yeah, 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 yeah. There are yeah, marginal notes. While printing the 1611 King James Version was clearly a labor of love, it did possess a number of typographical errors, primarily with regard to spelling, punctuation, capitalization, and use of italics. With few exceptions, the typos did not materially affect the meaning of the text. Rather than correct those minor imperfections, this replica preserves and presents the workmanship of the original, including the use of elegant classic typeface. There are only two here. There's a key here. Listen to this. This comes right from the editors of this book. There were only two differences between this special 400th anniversary edition and the first copy, namely... We have presented it without the deuterocanonical books, Apocrypha, and have reduced it from a massive 12 by 16 pulpit sized folio to the manageable keepsake, to this manageable keepsake. And then it just goes on and says Zonderfin, who Zonderfin actually makes this book, is are indebted to the Bible uh, site, greatsite.com, which actually is, you can actually get an original King James Version with the Apocrypha in there, which it costs like a hundred something dollars, which I'm probably going to get a hold of someday. But. Um, my problem is they just say, well, we presented this without the deuterocanonical books. Just, they just said, well, we're just, we're, we're just going to rip them out. I, I just can't get over that. So, this is a fraud. This is a fake. It's not worth your time. You might as well just go out and get the original from a great site and um, get the full thing. Even if you never read one of those books, Tobit, uh, Judith, so forth, not everybody reads every book. Some people like different books. I mean, but why rip them out? I don't understand that. Well, I get into the whole teachings of certain books, whatever. But you just can't decide to rip it out. And I'll get into why the Apocrypha, why books are there, why not. We're not getting into that right now for this video. It's already long enough. But um, if this does not have the Apocrypha or those missing seven books that were written in the original King James Version, this is a fraud and a fake. It is. It's not worth your time. I'm sorry. I only keep it for one reason. 
It has the cool uh, genealogy in the front, so I keep it for that reason. When I get a, a nice, a nice original that has everything, I'm gonna toss this in the trash because it, it actually disturbs me a little bit to have this in my on my bookshelf. But I keep it for that reason. <clears throat> now, this book has been compared to this book as well on a few YouTube videos, including the person I want to talk about a little bit, iCartoon 2, which again, I'm not talking bad about the individual itself, but just his video. While making, while making the video, he was trying to publicize the fact that you could get an original King James Version for a cheap price, which is true, I guess, but it's still fake. Um, and then at the end of his video, he has to come out and say, hey, and it has one good thing as well. It doesn't have the Apocrypha, and he said that's a good thing. How can you say that? How can you just take things out? If I don't like Esther, can I just take out Esther? Why not? Who's saying I, who's saying I can? Whatever. So he compares this book, which he picked up originally, and he says he doesn't like it because of a couple things. He doesn't like the fact that uh, when you open it up, it's in Roman font, which Roman font is easier to read than it's easier to read than Gothic font, and he says some of the illustrations aren't as nice. Um, I agree with that. Um, the reason I picked this up is because sure why, right. if I get there, <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, almost there. I do apologize. I should have this open. It has. No, I'm just gonna. Eh. Now, okay, here we go. It has this. The Apocrypha. This is how it was originally published in the original 1611 King's Games. I'm not doing well with this in my sorry. I'm going to get there. Starts right off with the first book of Esdras. Um, what this version did, this is actually a reproduction from Hendrickson. It's a reproduction of a mid-1800s Translate not translation, but a copy from they made the King James version. They took the original 1611 King James version and they put it in Roman font. That's all they did. And they were really concentrating on the text. That's why the, the genealogies and, and all that aren't in here. They wanted to get the text of the people in the original format. People wanted the original text, but they wanted to be able to read it. So that's why they made it. And Hendrickson republished this a few years ago, and just basically it's facsimile, I believe, most of it. Uh, on that original publication. So this is a, an exact copy. This is an exact copy of the original 1611 Bible because it contains the Apocrypha. Now I'm not going to say Hendrickson is the best thing going since sliced bread and they're great people because they also make another version just like this that looks exactly like this but somewhere down here it says without the Apocrypha because it just, the Apocrypha just disturbs some people so much. Whatever reason. I don't know. So they make another version for those people that don't want it. But, <coughs> but this one right here, this is an original 1611 version because it has the Apocrypha. So to me, when I talk about Bible version issues, this is a 1611 King James Bible. This is a King James version. This is a, is a 1611 King James version. That's how I differentiate the two. And this would be, I guess, a King James Bible as well because it does not contain the Apocrypha. This is a fake and this advertises itself as an original replica, and it's not because it takes out scripture. In my opinion, you cannot just take out scripture that has been approved to be there by some kind of ecclesiastic body, and that's why I, I follow those rules. Uh, an ecclesiastic, that ecclesiastic body approved them. The Protestants acknowledge those ecclesiastic bodies as well, so they can, you shouldn't be able to take them out. I'm sorry. From the, if you just say the Council of Carthage and the Council of Rome, which the Protestants acknowledge, and everybody acknowledges the Christianity in the first couple of councils, so you can't just take out scripture that you don't want. For, and I won't get into the reasons why, because that's another video. But I just want to say this one is a fraud. Don't get it. Yeah, it's cheap enough, but you might as well just spend the money and get the real one, because it doesn't contain everything. It takes out stuff that some people don't like. This one's advertised not being as good because of the font so much, but it's supposed to be readable. The Bible is supposed to be readable. I picked this up because this is the only version I could find that I could get the Apocrypha with the original and actually was legibly to read and was cheap enough. I don't want to buy this big 8x10 at great site. It's going to cost me $130, $40 plus shipping. This one cost me $21 at Barnes & Noble. So uh, I think it's a very good Bible. As far as the King, it's the only King James that I hold as being true. 
I have uh, mine here that I keep for sentimental reasons, and I have another one on my shelf that's a, a giant print edition my wife had, but it's still a King James Version. I only believe the 1611 King James Version is true. The King James Version has missing books and is not true. That's just the way I look at it. I know our, I Cartoon 2, as well as a few other people have said, it's better that it's not in there. Well, it, that's just your opinion. You can't just say, oh, it's better, it's not there. No, it doesn't make any sense. You're not following any rules. You're taking out whatever you want, and by, based on that logic, I should be able to do the same thing and still call it a Bible, which we know you can't do that. If I took out Esther from the Bible, people would have a fit. If the, I'd be a heretic. I'd be laughed at. But why should the Apocrypha be that way? And I'll talk about that in another video. But, um, I, I spent a little too much time. Sorry. This version is a fraud. This by, by Zonderfin. It's for like 5 to $8, depending on where you buy it. It looks real thick and has gothic font. It looks real cool. It is missing the Bible. It is not a 1611 King James Version. It is a lie. And that's where I'll leave that. So, obviously, I'll read your comments. Don't try, try to be too mean about it. Um, it's just my opinion. And I ain't allowed to have it. So, and I do believe in truth. And this is not true. You can say you like it, but it's not true. There's no argument you can say to say that this is a 1611 King James Bible. So, thank you.